You know, the road ear dog needs to uh, be able to go in and out of the flight zone, work with the cowboy and the horse. Just uh, pretty much the same thing as any cow dog would do. Maybe just a little bit more precise. We're going in and out of obstacles, sorting cattle. And uh, so this video, we just hope to show you some of the things that your dog will need to be able to do in order to compete in a roe deer competition. Uh, many, uh, many trained dogs can already do these things. Here the difference is, is that we're balancing to a horse most of the time, we're working with the horse. Now here this little dog is just uh, working on an obstacle here, taking the cows in and out of these panels. Uh, this little dog that's in training and Sandy's just uh, just teaching her where to be on the cows. Just notice how little it takes for her to move these cows where she needs to be. She comes over and catches the left eye of these cows, turns them through the obstacle. And Sandy's able to use her horse to help the dog a little bit, unlike other competitions. So one thing that we like our dog to be able to do is to just lay uh, quietly while we move the cow. It's just kind of a test, if you will. There's a young dog here that I'm training, and just some old gentle uh, training cattle, but I'm just going to stir them up, move them around a little bit, and uh, my dog just stay down, just stay laying down while I'm moving these cattle. This is so important. Dog gets up and makes the wrong move, and uh, just a slight move can, can really mess you up. So he just stays there till I give him a call. Now, one of the uh, places where it's real important is at a roe deer competition because you got all kinds of stuff going on. You got people whistling at their dogs, horses moving around, cattle moving around, there's cattle moving in the arena. I need my dog just to be able to lay quietly. Another place is when you're sorting. Um, I want my dog to just be able to lay down. This is where your dog can really mess you up if he gets up and makes a move just when that cow starts out and turns her back, then he just messes up the whole thing. He had a perfect opportunity to do that right there, but instead he came right in and, and helped me push this cow out. That's a real important place in that sorting pen where your dog needs to be able to lay quiet. We also want to be able to move our dog without moving the cow. I want my dog to kind of learn uh, where the flight zone is on the cattle. This is just a young dog here I'm training. I'm just making sure that he'll go all the way around both directions without moving his cattle to stay on that flight zone. Now I'm going to send him the other direction and make sure he just goes all the way outside that flight zone, both directions. You know, most dogs are either left-handed or right-handed, so we usually have to kind of overcome something uh, to get this done. Now you notice when he changes directions, he turns his side flat to the livestock, throws his shoulders out, turns his side flat to the livestock, so he doesn't penetrate that flight zone. He's not moving the cows at all. It's just a little test, kind of put our dog through to make sure he can do that. Now, one thing when I'm uh, when I'm working a young dog like this, I want to make sure that he will do that same thing and go all the way to the fence. Uh, it's something that uh, you might have to work on a little bit. A lot of dogs don't like to go all the way to the fence because they feel like they're losing control of their livestock. And I'm just making this dog make sure he goes all the way to the fence before he lays down, so that he would release those cows if they want. If I wanted them to come off of the fence. Now here is kind of an interesting shot, uh, this dog, how far he needs to be off of these cattle to actually turn them through that obstacle. He just comes just enough to catch that left eye of those cows. Of course, I'm on the other side with my horse there, keeping them from going around the obstacle. But he just comes out just enough to just catch that eye of the cow to turn. Now this uh, illustrates uh, how our dog goes in and out of the flight zone. So he, he uh, comes in where he affects the cattle. And he goes out where he doesn't affect the cattle. I'm going to change directions here and go back down the other way. Uh, looking at it from this angle, you can see how he actually rolls his shoulder out and kind of goes out off the stock. Here he's coming around. Now he's actually inside the flight zone just slightly there that, that these cows are not moving. He's stopping them from moving. Now I'll give him a little flank command. Go just far enough, just 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 right on the edge of that flight zone right now. Just enough to affect the cows, uh, but not really. Now he goes out. See how he went? He rolled his shoulder out outside the flight zone. See how those cows are still moving. 
Now he's going to come back inside the flight zone, make him move ahead a little bit, go back outside the flight zone, come in, stop the cows a little bit. Just a good illustration. Now this guy here wants to leave, so he's going to put her back, but then he's going to come back, help me move him. This really shows you that how a roe deer dog needs to work going in and out of that flight zone. It also needs to be able to go in among cattle without disturbing the cattle, without upsetting the cattle. And we This changes the flight zone picture altogether. The dog can go right in among those cattle without affecting them at all because he's not uh, trying to affect them because they know that. Now, also, your dog needs, of course, to be able to work with a horse. Here my dog's helping with sort here, and I think it's really interesting how he comes in here and helps me with this cow. He's actually working this cow through the legs of this horse without, without even, uh, uh, the horse is just, just something for him to go around. He's not even paying any attention to the horse at all. He's just catching the eyes of that cow. You also need a good clean heel bite, good hard bite, effective bite, and a good nose bite. As we know, uh, with cattle, sometimes the dog needs to bite to get the job done. I think this is real interesting here. This is at a roe deer competition. How uh, Sandy comes in here and she's able to position her dog exactly where she needs it without upsetting these cattle. She spotted the three that she needs are right on that outside edge. She's laid her dog down there and those that dog's actually holding those cattle right where she needs them while she goes to open the gate. Now all she has to do is turn around and ride right back past the head of those cattle and they'll walk right out that gate because her dog is in just the right spot. One cow, two cow, three cow. Now the dog is going to come right in behind that cow. Just, just separate them right off from those other cows. Help her drive them out. And the, the other thing is how nice and quietly they do this. How they keep from upsetting the cattle at this roe deer competition. Well, that pretty much sums it up of what your roe deer dog needs to, needs to know and what he needs to be able to do. And uh, we appreciate you watching our video. I'm Merle Newton, and I'll see you down the road.